Hi there, thanks for checking out our repair channel. And what this is going to be, this is kind of an overview and talk of this particular circuit board. Uh, this is a Gallagher, this is a circuit board module, module, whatever you want to call it. That's what Gallagher calls it. Other people call them power boards, circuit boards, motherboards, PCBs, whatever. They're all the circuit boards of circuit board. So, but anyways, um, this is a board that came out of an S50 Gallagher. Uh, we've repaired the board and got it going again. Um, so this is one that we got in this. Uh, customer sent in just the circuit board, uh, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than sending the whole big old unit because it has a big old battery, big old solar panels. It's a big contraption. So if you have a, a Gallagher S50, or you know how big those things are. Those things aren't cheap to ship. Take a pretty good sized box, and you really got to protect them uh, pretty good because the... Um, uh, solar panels are made out of glass on those things. So you really got to protect those very well. So most people, I try to coach them or something on how to take the thing apart and send just circuit board because about 80% of the time, maybe 75% of the time, the issue's in the board somewhere. And that's what was wrong with this one. So we've got the board going again um, for the guy. So a uh, little bit about it. Uh, this is one of their later style boards. Um on here this uh what was wrong with this one this particular when you buy a brand new s50 or even the gallagher s20 old style s20 modules when you buy it it comes like this it comes with both boards and everything but what was wrong with this one this particular board was bad you can't buy just this board so what we did we i had a cluster of boards sitting over there some are good some bad some need to be fixed or whatever basically stole this board off of one of those bad boards and soldered in because both the S20 and the S50 share the same board and we just desoldered and soldered a new one on there and then we just said well let's see what happens and we turned it on and powered it up and it working fine um, this little piece here is part of the switch this is where you turn it on and off at uh, this on the inside of an S50 which I don't like I said I don't have one here it has these little, there's, this piece has these little teeth on it, these little knobby teeth, and there's these little, there's this little bit long one right here. On the inside of the switch piece of the S15, S20 itself, has another little piece that looks similar to this, but it's a little bit different shape. It has uh, teeth in it, two little knobs on it too, and there's a little notch in that orange piece where this long one sticks in there. So basically, they kind of go like this, and as you turn the outside switch, it kind of does this and turns the whole turns that inside switch piece which turns this board here so this has uh, just a little light right here that flashes this little this lower right one, uh, white piece right here is a flashing green light the little one right above it is a photo sensor it picks up the amount of sunlight that's hitting this particular area and it slows the pulse down at night on really cloudy days to help conserve battery um, so that's that's just what this little job does. So when I'm going to turn it on, I've already got the switch turned to the on position, which if you're looking at it, this is inverted, of course. So straight with this little long tooth right there, this longer one, when it's in like the twelve or the 6 o'clock position, basically you take it, just sitting like this, turn it to about the 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock position roughly. Turn it right about there, and if you lay it face down when it's pulsing, it's going to be real slow because that little photo sensor thinks, hey, no light hit me, it's nighttime. You know, you kind of tricks the thing thinking it's nighttime, so it slows the pulse down. So I always have them face up like that, and then the light in the room will hit that little thing and make it pulse fast like normal. So I'm going to power it on. i got a 12.7 uh, volts running to it. I turn my overhead light off and you can see how it slows the pulse down. But the little green light's still flashing. We're going to turn the light back on. Kind of kind of see it flashing there, but see it's flashing like every here clicking and everything about every um try another light to see if this works. Yeah, it's flashing, clicking about every second and a half, second, point, 1.2, whatever it is. 
And when you slow the pulse down, or when, it, when the uh, sun goes down at night or gets really cloudy outside, it still puts the same amount of shock, uh, just at slower rate. Let me, let me go grab a tester. Turn the overhead light on real quick. See, it does a nice little spark to it. These are um, half jewel, half stored jewel units. So I'm gonna put a tester across here. We're getting uh, 9.2 kV out of it. Now we'll turn this light off. Slow that pulse down. It's about every two, about every two, three seconds. Still getting 9,000 volts out of it. So it's just as strong, just a slower pulse. So it's just as strong at night, just a slower pulse. This is just a conserved battery because how these units work on most solar units of most brands anyways, when the battery is fully charged, the uh, solar panel runs the unit on its own. The battery's just there as standby. So when it gets really cloudy outside or nighttime, the panel can't do its job basically. So the, um, so the circuit board or the uh, battery kicks in to keep it running. So at nighttime, battery's running the unit full blast, you know, full time. As soon as the sun comes back out, uh, as long as it's pretty sunny out, the solar panel will kick back on, charge the battery, and run the unit. Because by the, usually by the next morning, the battery's not drawn down too, too much where it's too low and it drags the solar panel down. So it's just probably, if it's, safe, if it's a 12-volt battery, fully charged, hit about 13 volts. Say next morning is 12.6 or 12.5. So it's still enough to run the unit. If it had to, but it's not low enough that it's going to drag the solar panel down. So the solar panel still has enough energy in itself to run the unit and charge that solar panel or charge that battery back up. And most, I mean, Parmax do that, I believe. Um, Gallagher's, all their solar Gallagher's do that. All their uh, solar ones do that uh, for the most part, or at least portable solar ones do. Um, so, but that's just a little overview. So if you I mean if you got an S20 and S50 Gallagher, um, if you got one that's not pulsing right or not working right or not putting out right, you can take the circuit board out. I would need both of these sections of boards to come in uh, for us to work on it. I can't do it just with this one, but they, when you open it up, they're going to be already um, uh, attached to one another. They're going to be like this. It's going to be sitting in the unit just like that. So when you ship it, you can have these little holes right here. You can just fold it over and set it on there and just wrap it real good because these little surface mount parts, I mean, they've got some coating on there to kind of protect them from moisture. Uh, but that would be the ideal thing to ship in. It's a heck of a lot cheaper to ship a little bitty board in like this than it is to ship in um, uh, the whole big unit. If you need help troubleshooting a unit, give us a call. I'm going to go and turn this unit off even though it's already off. And the thing you want to do is all this is a newer later S50. The older ones only had two capacitors. This one has a third one. And I don't think it had this little little transformer here. And sometimes the older ones were two red ones. Doesn't matter what color capacitor it is as long as it's the right one. But what you want to do is you can handle it by grabbing this, but those capacitors usually have a charge. So what I do is I take a pair of needle nose and those these two capacitors are wired together going right across one another so it doesn't matter which one you touch and it'll discharge and see that one's already discharged too this one usually doesn't have much of a charge but we'll just hold it across just in case but that is keep that basically kill the board any charges in the board kill it so that way you can handle the board without worrying about getting shocked by because little passers don't hurt too bad, but man, they'll grab you for a second, and it's, it's not pleasant. So you'll be, I feel like a 9-volt battery, at least on this style, I feel like a 9-volt battery going through your fingers. So when you put a 9-volt battery on your tongue, that's what it feels like it feels like in your hand. 
So it's very unpleasant. Uh, bigger capacitors hurt a lot worse. These ones aren't so bad. So, but anyways, uh, if you got a unit that needs to be worked on, I mean, give us a holler. We're happy to help you troubleshoot. Uh, I, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description area below of how to take apart an S50 or S20. They're basically the same thing on how to take them apart. Uh, I'll try to put a link down in the description. Or if you type in um, Gallagher S50 or Gallagher S20 uh, repair or how to fix in a Gallagher S50 or S20 or something like that, uh, there's a video. i got like a one or two part video. I can't remember what I've got. It's from two, three years ago. I've had to take one of those apart. So... Um, how to get inside of them i think i've got those videos if not i'll find the link and i'll put it down below but anyways until we do another repair video or how to fix one or how one works we'll see you guys later remember to subscribe to the channel hit that thumbs up button and our website and everything is down below it's fencerfixer.com and we'll see you guys later